Hey there, my friends. Welcome back to another video. Super grateful that you are here. If you're new, what is up? My name is Julia and I am somebody that advocates for intuitive living, intuitive eating, and fueling your unique body the way that you need to. Not me, not somebody else, you, because you are the main character in your life. Now let's get on to the food. To kick off day one, I sipped on a little coffee with some oat milk because I have a new rule. Sundays are for coffee, okay? I then had a little bit of this protein powder or a scoop of that protein powder, I should say, because I wanted to try it in its purest form with just water. It honestly was pretty damn good, I can't lie. From there, I headed home and made myself some breakfast. I cut up half of a block of tempeh along with a portobello mushroom, threw it in a frying pan with some fresh garlic, hot paprika, and some nutritional yeast, let that saute for a little bit, and then threw some tamari in there as well, and let it all caramelize into a deliciousness. Warmed up some leftover quinoa, and now we're building our bowl. We got some spinach, our leftover quinoa, and our tempeh portobello mixture, along with half of a beautiful avocado. I do gotta say, that one was literally perfection, and uh, it made my day. Threw some pickled jalapenos on my bowl, because you guys know I love to spice things up. Along with this queso cauliflower dip dressing stuff that I find at the grocery store and it's freaking delicious. Me and Mitch could honestly eat that entire thing in one sitting. It's, it's damn good. Because that was a little bit of a later breakfast, I really wasn't hungry until fairly late in the evening. So while I was making dinner, I warmed up some leftover soup so I could snack on that. Well, my curry, which is what we are going to make right here, was simmering and getting all flavorful. This entire recipe is going to be available in my up and coming recipe book. I don't have a launch date right now, but stay stay tuned with me, you know? And this soup recipe is available in my last video that I just posted, so make sure you go and check that out. It's a little bit of a different one. I like to experiment with, with spices and whatnot. So there's dill and sumac in it, a little weird. But hey, you know what? Your girl's a little weird. I then thought with my curry, I needed some tofu, some marinated tofu. So I chopped up some tofu and decided again to experiment with some spices with my mortar and pestle. Pestle? 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 Threw in some fennel, thyme, and coriander and smashed that all up until it was a nice fine powder. Threw that over my tofu until it was, you know, until I ran out of the mixture that I just smashed up. Every recipe needs a little bit of acidity and a little bit of sweetness, in my opinion. So I added some lemon juice and a little bit of maple syrup to this mixture, along with these chili flakes that I don't really know what the heck to do with. They kind of taste like sumac, but like not really. I just don't have anything else to compare it to. All in all, the tofu was, was delicious. It was a weird combination of flavors that I just love to experiment with. Because you know what, when you have fun in the kitchen and you just play with flavors, you get to know what goes well together. I highly, highly encourage people to just have fun in the damn kitchen, play off recipes and experiment. As you saw, I threw my curry together in my pan with some chickpeas, coconut milk, lots of spices, and I am just letting that sit on low heat for about 30 to 40 minutes. The longer the better with a super simple, delicious curry because when you just let the let the flavors marinate Mwah. this evening also felt like an evening for wine so i poured myself a glass of red wine threw my tofu in the oven and chilled watched some netflix while i was waiting for everything to finish and then i built my bowl up i got some white rice my tofu my curry along with some black sesame seeds and cilantro and there we are sipping our red wine watching netflix and enjoying our dinner as you guys know I've been trying to quit that daily cup of joe, and let's be real, it's not been easy. However, because of that, I've been a little bit of a matcha kick recently. I've seen your comments, I've answered some of your DMs about the matcha I've been loving recently, and that is Matchakari, also known as matcha.com. They're also today's sponsor, so thank you to them. To me, matcha can be an every single day ritual because unlike coffee, it doesn't give you anxiety, the jitters, a massive crash, and make you gotta poop all of the time. Whenever I start my day off with a matcha, I feel grounded, focused, calm, and ready to conquer my day. Their matcha is grown in Yuji, which is just outside of Kyoto, the ancient capital of Japan on pristine hillsides. There are only about 60 of these farms left. So purchasing this beautifully made high quality matcha from matcha.com is not just supporting them, but the farmers, and you're helping to uphold these beautiful ancient traditions. Their matcha is made in a very strategic 
strategic way, which means when you purchase it, it's not already oxidized into this ugly gray green doll color like so many other matchas out there. It is bright, beautiful, and seriously the best matcha I've tasted in my life. This one has this sweet, earthiness to it that honestly I don't have to add heapings of maple syrup to it to make it taste freaking good. The co-founder Dr. Andrew Weil has been advocating for a very long time about nourishing your body, natural medicines, and all of the lovely things. So it's no wonder he started a matcha company. Matcha is extremely high in antioxidants, it helps your brain function, and all of these amazing other benefits that are attached to it. If you'd like to try a sip of their organic, high quality, harvested in Japan matcha, head over to matcha.com, use my code Julia to get 20% off of your first purchase. Thank you so much, matcha.com, for sponsoring today's video. A squirrel just flew from tree to tree and it was so funny to watch. Like full blown, just. <sighs> I feel like chia seed pudding was a little bit of an obsession trend, you know, on Instagram a while ago, and I thought, what the heck? Your girl's bringing it back for a hot minute, you know? So I added a third a cup of some chia seeds to a jar, along with some protein powder, orange zest, turmeric, and a decent amount of water. I definitely should have added more water. I regretted not adding more water, not gonna lie. <laughs> I then munched on a couple of these protein balls that I made last night, which I'm going to show you right now. I added half of a cup of some coconut flour, which yes, coconut flour sucks. I, I gotta say, it just dries out everything, all right? So feel free if you want to make these at home. Use oat flour. Use another edible gluten-free flour. Uh, don't use coconut flour. Anyways, we got cocoa powder, chocolate protein powder, pea protein powder, hemp seeds, cocoa nibs, almond butter. We're gonna add some maple syrup and some coconut oil as well. I will write this entire little recipe here down in the description box below, so do not worry, but feel free to play around with it. Everybody's measurements may be a little bit different, so if you need to add a little bit more coconut oil or sweetness like maple syrup, go for it. I had to add some more liquid to mine because coconut flour, like I said, stinks, in my opinion. Okay, that's my opinion. I think it stinks. If you can give me a credible a credible recipe that actually uses coconut flour, send it my way. Prove me wrong. Prove, prove me wrong, please and thank you. Once I got everything mixed up into my desired consistency, I rolled it into cute little balls and now we're back to the same day. So along with my chia seed pudding, we needed to top it off with some beautiful oranges and some gooseberries. I don't know if you guys know, what, I think they're called gooseberries. Are they called gooseberries? If you don't know what they are, they're, they're these things. Honestly, love them. They're like a weird cross between a cherry tomato and a blueberry. I don't know what else, how else to describe them. I do want to say this was a massive amount of chia seed pudding, so I did not finish it all. I probably ate 75% of it. And I had a photo shoot today, so I was running a little bit low on time. So I munched on some leftover curry and just made some more rice. Again, that was a massive bowl with a lot of rice and curry and whatnot. So I only ate about 75% of it. And then I needed a nice big nourishing dinner after the day was done. So I diced up some onion, garlic, and some apple. Yes, apple, because it adds such a beautiful natural sweetness to things. I love it in stir fries. After I let that saute for a little while, I threw in some red pepper, carrot, and my tofu, and then it was time to experiment again. So to my little bowl here, I threw a bunch of chili flakes along with crushed cilantro, dried cilantro, I should say, fresh basil, fresh cilantro, some black pepper, and some salt as well, and then pour it over some hot oil. I saw somebody do something kind of similar on Instagram the other day, and I was inspired. But because this is gonna be going in within a massive stir fry, I added some tamari, rice syrup, rice syrup? Rice vinegar, and some maple syrup. I also added some red cabbage to my stir fry because it needed to be used. It's just been sitting in my fridge doing a whole lot of nothing. For some extra protein in this dish, I threw in a bunch of edamame. I absolutely freaking love edamame, especially when I can buy it depotted. Depotted? Is that a word? It's gonna be a word now. This was a struggle. I threw in the rest of my sauce along with some rice noodles and mixed everything up until it was super, super well combined. And then it was time to freaking eat. It was time to freaking eat. 
And I gotta say that this was absolutely damn delicious. And I had to go back for seconds. Please, if you are still hungry or even if a meal is just damn delicious and you want more, go and get it. The next morning, I was out of milk. So I made a hot chocolate with just water and ashwagandha and maple syrup. And it was a little bit sad, but hey, she did the job. I then made a smoothie with a frozen banana and a half, along with frozen cherries, chocolate protein powder, hemp seeds, chia seeds. And because I was out of milk, again, I just had to add some water. This, guys, was a beautiful, look, like, do I have to explain myself? Look how damn beautiful that is. And I gotta say, it tasted beautiful as freaking well. One thing, one thing you have to do in your life is make great tasting food for yourself. Because when we make natural nourishing foods still taste absolutely damn delicious, of course our body is going to crave more of them. That doesn't mean we're not gonna crave some chips, a cookie, a brownie, whatever the case may be every once in a while or every day but it means we don't dread eating fresh fruits and veggies and things that are nutrient packed because we know that we can make it taste delicious. Ah! We do want it. For lunch today, I was feeling another big Buddha bowl of sorts, but a little bit of a different vibe than the one we had yesterday. So I'm marinating my tempeh along with some ginger, fresh cilantro, lime juice, some tamari, and of course some sriracha and a little bit of maple syrup. Actually, that's a lie, coconut sugar today because we're changing things up, coconut sugar. I then let that set aside for about 15 minutes or so and then diced up, sliced up, cut up, one of those things to a mango. <laughs> I had an allergic reaction to papaya not too long ago and for some reason this was the first tropical fruit that I had again after that and I was a little nervous that I was gonna have an allergic reaction to it just because you never know. Sometimes your body does weird things. <laughs> Luckily, we did not. But anyways, as my oil was getting hot preparing for the tempeh, I decided to make myself a little turmeric matcha drink. I know I've said how freaking good it is before, but it's freaking delicious, okay guys? It's seriously the best matcha. And honestly, that best turmeric that I've had before, I do gotta say I have cheaped out on those things before and it's just like, it's not worth it to cheap out on those things. I've never really thought that getting a better quality dried turmeric would actually taste that much better, and it really does. I do gotta say. Anyways, we are building up our bowl, and yes, we're doing it in the bowl that we marinated our tempeh in, because why not get all of the delicious juices from the marinade on the rest of our bowl? We got some leftover brown rice that I made up for my curry lunch yesterday, along with half of an avocado, our mango, spinach, and our tempeh, all topped off with a little bit of sesame seeds, some mayo, and some cilantro, because that's just the way we do it over here. Bye. That's your tempeh? Yeah. I've just never seen it look like that. What is that? What do you mean, temp? What do you mean? That's what tempeh looks like. Really? Yeah, what do you think it looked like? When we get the maple one. <laughs> it's like maple bacon. I don't remember. Yeah, because it's sliced like that. Oh, that's why. I don't like to see it like that. I never see the top of it. Yeah. Like... <laughs> I'll, uh, give you some feedback. In the video, and like, I don't know. For dinner tonight, we are making a super, super simple one. I just threw in some black beans, along with some spinach, cilantro, fresh jalapeno. I know it's jalapeno. I just have fun saying jalapeno. I also crumbled in half of a block of some tempeh, threw in some barbecue sauce, a little bit of water, and as it was cooking up, I needed a little bit of hot sauce and a little extra barbecue sauce in here as well. And of course, I threw in a little bit of water into the mixture just to make sure it was saucy and everything and got super well combined. I let that stew on the stove while I was pressure cooking a sweet potato, plated that all up on top of each other, and then drizzled that delicious queso, damn good sauce dip, whatever you wanna call it, it is deliciousness. On the side of my stuffed sweet potato, I had half of an avocado, and I gotta say, this entire meal probably took about 22 minutes to make. It's super easy, super delicious, highly, highly recommend. After dinner, me and Mitch were chilling watching Netflix and what better pairing than some delicious chocolate chip cookies 
you know? Damn. The next morning, I wasn't really feeling traditional quote-unquote breakfast food. I had a dream of this Mediterranean salad in my head and it just, it just needed to be made. And I do want to say, any food is breakfast food, okay? Okay, people? We got a bunch of goodies in this salad. Lots of veggies, olives, sun-dried tomato, quinoa, Dijon mustard. I also crumbled in a quarter block of tempeh, lots of lemon juice, some olive brine, hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds. And that was that. Super, super simple, but damn delicious and nourishing. Your girl's period is coming up pretty shortly, so, you know, I was craving some chocolate today. And I only ate about half of the salad at the beginning of the day and then munched on it for lunch as well. And then my second lunch was finishing up those beans along with some tortilla chips and that queso deliciousness dip. For dinner tonight, I was feeling another super, super simple one, so I am sauteing up a small cooking onion along with some chili flakes, basil, and some rosemary as well. And once that was done, I just set it aside. However, in the meantime, we are throwing in some hot water into a bowl of cashews and just letting that soak for about 20 minutes or so. I had these maple breakfast sausage thingamajiggers that I picked up from the grocery store that I wanted to try. Just diced them up and then threw them into the pot that I had the onion sauteing in. Now we're moving over to making our delicious cashew cream mac and cheese sauce. I got lots of nutritional yeast in there along with some garlic powder, turmeric, salt, pepper, our cashews, of course, and a pressure-cooked sweet potato. She fell apart, as you can tell. <laughs> I blended that all up, made some pasta, and then once my pasta was fully cooked, throw some in. I don't know how much. I don't know, big handful. Got lots of pasta here. Like so. that? Maybe a little more. Good. Sure. So I threw my sauce into the pot to get it nice and hot, along with some vegan mozzarella cheese my macaroni mixed that all on up and covered it with a lid until the vegan cheese melted and then served it up topping it with those maple sausage thingamajiggers and to spice things up i added some pickled jalapenos because mm, just so freaking good i do want to say however that i meant to use chickpea pasta for this recipe but the one day I needed it, I could not find it anywhere. I checked like three different grocery stores and none of them had that. So to add a little extra protein to this meal, definitely use some chickpea pasta or lentil pasta, but that's a super simple swap. As I told you guys, my period is coming. So I needed a hot chocolate made with real chocolate this morning. I just slowly mixed in these little chocolate bites into milk and let them melt until I made a beautiful hot chocolate. I then headed home from Mitch's house and I'm gonna make myself a nice big breakfast sandwich. I'm slicing up a couple portobello mushrooms. I'm adding some oil to a hot pan and then chucking in my portobello mushrooms, sauteing them until a lot of their liquids have evaporated and they've shrunken down to to basically nothing. I added a little bit of chili flakes, some salt, and some balsamic vinegar because I haven't used balsamic vinegar throughout this entire week. And that in itself, for me, is an atrocity. I don't know how I lived this long. Anyways, <laughs> I got a couple pieces of gluten-free toast. I added half of an avocado to one side along with some Dijon mustard, some vegan mayo on the other side, my portobello mushrooms, some spinach, some pickled red onions, some cucumber, and then cracked some fresh black pepper on it. To me, fresh black pepper on a sandwich is just a beautiful thing. It's just a beautiful damn thing. And you know what? The proper way to cut a sandwich is this way. Not the half, not the half stuff, okay? Sideways. Alongside my sandwich, I served it up with a matcha lavender latte. Yeah, it's a little different, but damn, is it elegant. I started off by adding some hot water to my matcha, whisking it up with my beautiful bamboo whisk until it's super well combined. And then in the meantime, in the meantime, in the meantime, I had some milk simmering on the stove with a tablespoon worth of lavender. I strained it over my glass and then gently poured over my matcha to make this beautiful, separation, mix it up with a straw, and enjoyed. 
I don't get super hungry when I'm just about to start my period so all I decided to do for lunch was just snack on some leftover stir fry that I had sitting in the fridge and for dinner I needed some tacos. Mm. I had soaked and boiled these lentils until they were cooked, added them to my bowl alongside onion powder, smoked paprika, chili powder, nutritional yeast, some cumin and some Dijon mustard. I then mix slash mashed up these lentils with a fork. I didn't fully mash them because I didn't want it to become a paste. I still wanted some textural variation and to also help with that textural variation and add a little bit of a nice nutty flavor, I crumbled in some walnuts, just using my hands to crush them up and adding them straight to the lentils. Lentils. lentils in a vegan taco mix is actually so, so good and I really highly recommend it. To also help with the quote unquote meatiness of this taco mix, I finally chopped up a portobello mushroom and because I had one left sitting in my fridge that I needed to use, I added it to a hot pan and allowed some of the liquids to evaporate and then added my lentils to it. To make it a little bit more saucy, I added a little bit of water and of course I had to season it with some salt. I heated up some corn tortillas in my oven and I've seen some comments from you guys being like, are you crazy? Are you not heating up your corn tortillas? Of course, of course I'm heating up my corn tortillas. I'm a crazy person, but I'm not that crazy. If you don't heat up your corn tortillas, what are you doing, you know? Because the corn tortilla goes from like a one on the scale of tastiness to a 10 when you heat it up. I don't know how it happens, but it happens. Anyways, I built up my tacos with some cucumber, mango, parsley because I ran out of cilantro, really finely chopped jalapeno, lettuce, vegan mayo, a squeeze of lime, and to add some extra acidity, some pickled red onions, and of course, some avocado as well. These were really fun to eat and absolutely delicious. Tacos for dinner is a win in my books. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and got some value out of it. And if you try any of these higher protein vegan recipes, make sure you guys let me know down in the comments and or snap a picture and tag me on Instagram. I want to remind you to head over to matcha.com to get 20% off of your first purchase using the code Julia. I can't wait for you to join me on this little matcha train and try out this absolutely delicious matcha. I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you again very, very soon.